But this man who lived a sinless life, a guiltless life, a life of nothing but love, good works, and ministry. When people were in need, Jesus met their need. When people needed to be healed, Jesus healed them. He even did things he didn't even necessarily have to do, like turning water into wine. But because of his hospitable nature, because his mama said, he went ahead and did. But understand, we find no record of Jesus Christ ever breaking any law. You're right. Yet, yes. it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That doesn't make sense from a human intellectual perspective. But if we understand the essence that Jesus took on, mm -hmm. he has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering mm -hmm. for sin. Look, that word propitiation means that Jesus Christ became the receptacle okay. for sin. Jesus Christ became the garbage can. Come on now. To be filled yep. with all of the sins of the world. And God hates sin. Hates it. God detests sin. Right. So Jesus Christ is there at Gethsemane in prayer about let this cup yes. pass from me. Father God, if there is another way for this scheme of redemption to be executed without me as a perfect man becoming the garbage can and the receptacle for sin, let's do it that way. Because God, I know how you feel about sin. I know that you don't fellowship sin. I know you don't entertain on, sin. Therefore, he cries out on yes, the cross, yes, my yes, God, yes, my God, yes, why yes, is yes, that yes. sin? Wow. No, God can't entertain sin. Sin while it's hanging up on the cross. So whatever moment in time this was, God had to bring me. Yes, he did. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. 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 He turned on. his back on. on that because yes. he cannot yes. help out yes. sin. Jesus Christ wasn't on the cross mm. as a sinless man. Right. He was on the cross as a guilty man. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Church, understand this. And this is what made my heart just continually to beat. That Jesus Christ did not die for me. Jesus Christ died as. Me. It's a good word. It's a good word. It's all right. All of my wretchedness. Come on now. Come on. Jesus said, let me as a perfect man put Amor yes. on. Yes. And let me die on the cross. So when God looked at the cross momentarily and Jesus Christ is crying out, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It's because he does not see Jesus on the cross. He sees sin. So understand this dichotomy. Help us. You and I, if we are in the body of Christ, mm. now when God looks at us, He doesn't see. Come on now, make the make us. point. Thanks. He sees the Jesus, Jesus right. covering us. That's a good word. But Jesus Thanks. Christ hung on the cross, yes. and God didn't see His Son, right. but God. Saw you right. and me and our wretched condition, and that is why Jesus Christ defeated both the grave yes. and death. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, if that doesn't help you appreciate the pain, is one thing. Yes, Lord. But to know that Jesus Christ became 
your receptacle, your garbage can, and then had to be put in a position where he was antithetical to his father as a representation of sin. Yes. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. If I'm up there, it's what I deserve. Yeah. Jesus is up there and he does not deserve it. I understand, just like from, from an Old Testament perspective, when they sacrificed the bulls and the goats and, and, they, and they placed all of the sins on the sacrifice, yeah. well, that sacrifice actually became the sin. And that's what was sacrificed. That, was, that is the element that had the blood spilled and the head cut off and all of it had to be burned up. Why? That now was the sin. You're right. Jesus Christ, he became sin for us. That should remove any level of arrogance Come on now. that we have about who we are in Christ. Because Jesus Christ took on your fault, your sins, your grief. Your sorrow, your iniquities, and did not die on the cross under the schema of, I'm the son of God. Right. He died on the cross as wretched man. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 8. Leviticus 8. As we try to shift gears momentarily, we had to express that point because we said we would eventually get to a place where we would discuss our Levitical implications. So we find ourselves first of all realizing that everything God did was to sanctify us. To put us in a different category or to create us as his special people. Ultimately being the fulfillment of Old Testament law. If there was a people that members in the body of Christ represent today, undoubtedly it would be the tribe of Levi. Because the tribe of Levi was this group of people, not because of any uniqueness about them, but because of their position and their relationship and their response to Moses in Exodus 32 after they had made a mess of things and, and God, basically, basically Moses says, who's going to be on my side? And it was the tribe of Levi that stood up. So God said from this day forward, I will sanctify the tribe of Levi, and the tribe of Levi will be responsible for all of the ministerial efforts for the entire nation of Israel. Well, God today has sanctified his church. And all of the ministerial efforts that are to be connected to the church, that are be designed, that are designed to save a lost and a dying world, they are to come through the church. So everybody in the church is now representation and the realistic tribe. In other words, nobody has the right to approach God like you. Nobody has the right to worship and praise God like you. Nobody has the right to be a living sacrifice for God like you. Why? God has sanctified you and hollowed you out to be his special people. Now, don't, 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 don't get confused and think I'm talking about just the people sitting right here. But all of the people that make up the cosmology of the body of Christ, God has sanctified them for his special and unique purpose. Right. Leviticus chapter 8, starting at verse, verse number 1, and we'll just jump around here. Hopefully you don't mind some reading this morning. But we have to be appreciative of our Levitical implications because way back in the book of Levi, from an Old Testament perspective, God was helping us understand what we were to become. And the Lord, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments and the anointing oil, and the bull 
blocked for the sin offering. 